Regulations against drunk driving, how effective are they? In the US, limiting and regulating alcohol use has shown to be a very powerful tool against drunk driving. When the Presidential Commission Against Drunk Driving PCDD, was founded in 1982, drunk driving was regarded as a widespread problem. 21,113 people died as a result of drunk driving in that one year alone, which is nearly 50% of all traffic-related fatalities. To effectively address the issue of drunk driving, the PCDD developed 39 recommendations, including tougher punishments for those who are found guilty of driving under the influence, public anti-drunk driving campaigns, and youth awareness initiatives. The advice to combat underage drinking and driving by raising the legal drinking age stands out among the 39 others. The Minimum Legal Drinking Age Act, which was signed into law by President Reagan in 1984, raised the drinking age to 21. By 1987, this new limit had been enacted in all 50 states. The new national BAC level of 0.08% or above, which would make it unlawful to operate a motor vehicle, was officially advocated by President Clinton in 1998. The federal government put pressure on state governments to adopt the 0.08% cap throughout the course of the following few years. All 50 states and the District of Columbia made it unlawful to drive with a blood alcohol content BAC, of 0.08% or higher by 2004. This was a key victory in the battle against drunk driving, much like the Minimum Legal Drinking Age Act. Less Drunk Driving Fatalities The number of licensed drivers using our roadways and the population of the United States both rise annually. It follows that the number of fatalities and incidents involving drunk driving would also rise annually, and up until 1982, that was typically the case. Since then, and with the achievement of each significant reform step, there has been a marked decrease in the number of fatal drunk driving accidents across the country. Despite the U.S. population growing by approximately 100 million people between 1982 and 2016, the number of drunk driving fatalities more than halved. Look at these annual statistics. There were 21,113 fatalities from drunk driving in 1982. 15,827 people died as a result of drunk driving in 1991. 13,041 people died as a result of drunk driving in 2007. 10,497 people died as a result of drunk driving in 2016. According to estimates, tighter drunk driving legislation and alcohol restriction regulations have saved about 90,000 lives since 1991. Alcohol restrictions that are strict save lives. The decrease in fatal drunk driving accidents across the country and the enforcement of stricter alcohol regulations are related in a way that is not coincidental. We only need to look at the correlation between anti-drunk driving initiatives and the amount of drunk driving fatalities in particular states to see that stricter rules actually save lives. Despite the fact that the BAC limit for drivers and the minimum legal drinking age MLDA, are both nationally enforced legislation, there is still a significant difference in the number of fatalities due to drunk driving between different states. The national average for drunk driving fatalities per 100,000 people in 2017 was 3.4. The death rate varied from as low as 1.5, New York, to as high as 7.6, California, Wyoming. Researchers evaluated the effectiveness of 29 alcohol control laws across the nation and compared their findings to the number of fatalities from drunk driving in each state. The objective was to determine whether states with the harshest and broadest alcohol control laws also had the lowest death rates, and if so, which laws were the most successful. Unsurprisingly, the team discovered that the incidence of fatal road accidents caused by alcohol was lower in jurisdictions with strong regulations. This groundbreaking study looked at a wide range of policies, not simply those related to drunk driving laws and penalties. Researchers also examined more comprehensive alcohol management strategies that had nothing to do with driving. The regulations comprised Fake ID laws rules, governing blood alcohol levels, the regulations and sanctions governing the sale of alcohol to minors, limits on alcohol sales hours, open container rules, putting in place sobriety checkpoints, alcoholic beverage tax, initiatives and programs for alcohol awareness, DUI administrative license suspension, alcoholic beverage control, ABC, boards availability and effectiveness policies for alcohol home delivery. 
On the basis of the effectiveness of each of these metrics, each state was then assigned a score between 1 and 5, with 5 signifying the maximum efficacy. So, often, the states with the best overall ratings were those in which, alcohol is difficult to come by, penalties for breaking alcohol laws are the worst. There are many, well-funded programs to raise awareness of alcohol use. According to the study's findings, states with the tightest alcohol laws typically had the lowest incidence of fatal drunk driving accidents. There is no doubt that strict alcohol regulations save lives. According to data from the aforementioned study, policies that discourage heavy drinking and binge drinking are just as important as those that directly address drunk driving. Reducing overall alcohol misuse appears to be a useful strategy for lowering the number of cases of driving while intoxicated. This is probably because someone who is intoxicated is quite prone to making bad decisions, like operating a motor vehicle. There was a significant correlation between the frequency of sobriety checkpoints, traffic stops where drivers are randomly tested for alcohol intoxication, and the quantity of alcohol-related traffic fatalities. The Center for Disease Control and Prevention CDC, made a similar discovery in a different study, which found that sobriety checkpoints can cut the frequency of drunk driving collisions by about 9%. It appears that heightening the possibility of legal ramifications works as a deterrent as well. The number of fatal drunk driving accidents in the US has been hovering around 10,000 for the previous 4 to 5 years. This indicates that about 30% of road fatalities still involve alcohol and that states still have work to do in the effort to combat drunk driving. Ultimately, unless individual drivers are dedicated to acting responsibly, all the regulations, limitations, and fines in the world are meaningless. Alcohol is unlawful for anyone under the age of 21 and is harmful and can influence bad judgments. Avoiding situations is the only way to keep secure.